So good to be with you at Connect Group. Um, really excited to be continuing our preach series on identity, looking at that whole question of who am I? It's such a big topic in our day and it's so important that we have both a biblical perspective, but also that we take time to understand ourselves. If you've missed uh, the first couple of preaches in the series, they're well worth uh, watching, so do go onto the website. I think uh, they will provide an excellent foundation for everything that we're going to cover over the next few months. As you know, we're going to use Ephesians chapter one, the first sort of half of that, um, as a springboard over the over the coming um, coming months. And today we're going to look particularly at verse three. It says this: "Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ." And so today we're going to look to answer the question, am I blessed or cursed? At its most basic, to curse is to invoke harm or injury on someone. Now, for for some of us, we we may think that curses are just superstitious. um, They don't have real power. But the truth is, we know that words do have power. You know, how many of us can remember times when we were told that we are clumsy, we were, we're weird, we're useless, and the impact even those words can have on our lives can be absolutely massive. But for others, curses are much more direct, they're much more real, they can be much more seen, and there is a real fear of being cursed. It, it comes from the power of the occult, it comes from the demonic, and and people can get ill on the back of being uh, cursed, um, infertility, uh, they can even cause death or financial ruin. And though for, so for some, this is a very, very serious issue. Let's have a pause for a moment and spend a few moments answering the question that's going to come up on the screen. The Bible talks about another curse, which is even more devastating for people. In Galatians 3, picking it up in verse 10, we read about a curse that rests on all people. Why don't you just uh, take a moment and turn to Galatians chapter 3, picking it up in verse 10. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. We've heard previously that human beings are created as image bearers of God, but we have been defaced and polluted by sin as a like a great masterpiece where you can see some of its uh, some of its wonder, but 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 it's been marred. That's that's like human beings. As part of God's big plan of restoration, he has revealed what is right, true and life giving. And in that passage we've just read in Galatians, those things are called works of the law. The law can be summarised in love God with all you've got and love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. But the truth is, as human beings, we we can't do it. We can never fulfil God's right, true, life-giving law on our own. We fall short. I, I don't even have to look back many days to, to realise that, that I, I, I don't love God with, with all of my being, that, that I don't love others as much as I love myself. I'm much more preoccupied with Paul than I am with other people. In fact, the law reveals how much sin has defaced and polluted us. It reveals how far we've fallen short. But, but it gets worse. The Galatians passage says that the bad news doesn't stop there. It says that if we rely on our own works of goodness, 
we will not only miss the mark, but we'll be under a curse. If you don't perfectly fulfill what is right, true and life giving, then you're a lawbreaker and you're under a curse. Now, the curse is the judgment of God, which the law pronounces on all lawbreakers, which rests upon us. And this is the appalling predicament of all human beings. Let's just spend a few moments answering the following questions that will come up on the screen. Hope you had a good discussion. The passage then goes on to say this. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. The cross of Jesus Christ is absolutely essential for human beings to be restored to God. It's the only way. It's the only channel of salvation. God made Jesus a cursed one so that we might go free. That's what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. He became a curse for us. He carried God's judgment at my sin. It then goes on to say in verse 14, he redeemed us. He, he brought us out of slavery in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ. It's, it's the same as what it says in Ephesians, where it talks about us receiving every blessing in Christ. Jesus took our curse. We get his blessing. We get to become an object of favour. We get all the benefits that are credited to Jesus. In Ephesians, every spiritual blessing in Christ, hidden in Christ, I am blessed. Jesus became a curse for me in order that I might get all the blessings owed to him. And as we work our way through Ephesians 1, we're going to see that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are chosen that we are adopted, that we are empowered. And over the coming weeks, we will take one at a time and unpack them. We want to apply them into our lives because it's part of who we are. It's who I am. I am in Christ and I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. As we close, I've got some questions um, some things for us to do, and I'd encourage you to pray together as you close. God bless.